Hey, it's Sarah from Made on the Common and we're back with another video in this series on using your Etsy bookkeeping template. So in this one we're going to concentrate on the Etsy summary sheet and this is where all of the data that we've previously added, so your payment account and your order information or your order by item information if um, you're using the VAT registered template, it all gets summarised into this one sheet and this is where we can check the numbers that we've got against what was on Etsy and also see the numbers that will go forward onto your reports. So the top part of the sheet is the same whichever version of the template you're using and this um, basically reflects what you see on your payment account on Etsy. So we start with the net income and this is purely adding up um, the net column which is the very end column on your payment account. So it's this end column here. So that just summarises it by month. And then we add back any payments that you've made to Etsy. So this is normally if you've had to issue a refund and there wasn't enough money in your payment account to fund it. So Etsy will kind of pull the money back from your bank account um, as happened in February. And so if we add that back, that gives us a, a kind of a true picture of what we've actually earned from Etsy. So this is your sales less your fees. And then after that, we break down that number into the various component sections. So this number here is the same as this number up here. Um, this is just breaking it down into more detail. And the format of this matches the new activity summary that you'll see on your payment account if you go back and look on Etsy. Um, this is only true from uh, January 2022. So prior to that, um, it didn't give you this breakdown on Etsy. It actually gave you just two numbers, a sales number and a fees and taxes number. Um, and I've tried to reflect those two under here. They weren't actually good numbers up until the end of um, December 2021. There were a lot of errors and issues with those numbers, but I've tried to kind of reflect those issues in here. So at least you get an idea if you can track those numbers back. Um, but from January, we do get a good summary finally from Etsy of what we've earned and what we've paid in fees. So these numbers we should be able to track back onto Etsy. So we've got your sales number. So if we go to Etsy, let's look at um, January 2022. So you see just actually before we go there, this is 21 and you've got um, a kind of a statement saying they can't give you the activity summary and you just got two numbers here. These two numbers are what you would see in um, these two grey lines here so hopefully they will agree um, don't use them for any bookkeeping because they're not they're not good numbers they're literally just there for you to check back against what's on it say but from January 22 so let's go back if i change this now to January 22 you'll see the difference so you now get um you get a statement of what your net profit was so 267274 which is what we've got here 267274 so that's a good start and then we get the breakdown into the four kind of different sections, which again matches the four numbers that you've got here. So you've got sales, fees, marketing, and if you buy shipping labels or postage labels through Etsy, you would see that number in here as well. And then you can open any of these and just get a breakdown. So you've got sales refunds. And then this is the tax that Etsy add and kind of handle themselves. Um, so VAT if you're in kind of Europe or the UK and sales tax if you're in the US and I believe that's going to start getting added in for Canada as well. So going back, um, we can see it says total sales 314795. We've got 314795 and then broken down into three numbers. You've got your fee breakdown. So you have the the fees on your sales and then any refunds of fees given if you've refunded an order you get a credit back on your fees so you get that whole breakdown which again should match what you see in here um, you get your seller services which is mainly marketing so things like Etsy ads and subscriptions if you have any um, and then it also some of I think the tax on subscriptions get added into this section for some reason tax on your ads actually appears up here which okay a bit confusing but that's how it is but that should all break down so 42.28 we see 42.28 there so hopefully those numbers will all match um, and that format is the same whichever um, version of the template you're using 
if you're using the Etsy deposits manager, which is the one where you can check um, your earnings, which is this kind of section against what you've actually received into your bank account. This sheet's actually called Etsy earnings, I think, and it kind of ends at this pink line here. So you won't see anything below that. If there is anything in this pink line, it means probably that Etsy have changed something or there's something that's gone through your payment account that I haven't covered up here. Um, so you would have a difference. It means that this breakdown isn't matching kind of your total number. Um, please let me know if that's the case because it might be that I need to tweak the template slightly to pick up something new or again that Etsy have changed something which they did recently. Um, they moved some of the fees actually into the amounts column, not the fees and taxes column. So I had to adjust this. Um, but yeah, let me know and I can kind of walk you through that. If you have anything in here, the first thing I would do is just go back to the start here page and check that you're on the latest version. So we're currently on version 8.1, um, but if you're not on 8.1, then you might well find that you have something appearing in this pink line um, or even that your sales don't appear kind of at all if you're on a, a kind of much older version. So always kind of get the latest version. It's a free update. Um, you just need to sign up to my email list um, and tell me which template you have and I can send you the link to download the latest version for free, um, which is just a service that I offer. Um, occasionally you will find that these months don't tie up. Um, I actually found this in April. So my sales number on here is 151496. You'll see it's kind of massively different 197812 and this is because Etsy again a little quirk of Etsy is that they don't always have the month being the month so in this case if we scroll all the way down if we go right back to the very start of this payment account you will see that we not only have April we have the last day of March in here so the last day of March on my spreadsheet on the template will be in the March column whereas April um, is just starts on 1st of April. But in Etsy world, the last day of March, for some reason, is included in your April bookkeeping template. So it's only ever a timing difference. You'll probably find if we add March and April together, they will come back to the right number, unless they did the same in May. Um, I don't know why this happens sometimes. It's not every month. Um, it's only some months. I think it partly depends on where you are in the world. Um, Etsy just make things complicated but I would work so all the way down to this pink line actually to the grey line will be the same whichever template you're using but you will then see some differences um, so if we look at the VAT registered template you'll see that under these two grey lines instead of going straight to figures to your 12 month report you've got a section where it pulls out your VAT numbers um, so this is because any VAT that's been included in your sales needs to come out of your numbers before we get to the report. Um, that's not really your income, that is money that's owed to the tax authorities, so we strip it out and the numbers that go in here um, are net of any tax. And this is the same for the US and the Canadian versions as well. And if we look on um, the Canadian template or the US template, you'll see there's a line here called removal of sales tax paid to you. Um, and this, again, is where we strip out any tax that's included in these sales numbers um, that you then need to remit to the tax authorities. And that instead will go and appear on your tax summary. So when so every time we see the 12 month report, these numbers are always net of tax. So they're kind of um, they're the same across all of the templates, but we've just sometimes had to pull out more numbers. So that's kind of, and you will also then also get a summary of the sales tax split between what's been paid to you and what Etsy have calculated and retained. So that just gives you kind of the breakdown of those. Underneath, oh, sorry. So then these figures that go into your 12 month report, let me just pop back to the, um, the filled version. So in the 12 months report, so these numbers are what then appear on this 12 months report over here. So you get three lines for Etsy sales and three lines for Etsy expenses. So again, there's no um, input on this sheet. It pulls through automatically from this Etsy summary. 
um, and just gives you a breakdown between your orders, your refunds and any shipping that you've charged separately to your customers. And then your fees get broken down between selling, marketing and any shipping labels that you purchased kind of on Etsy. So that just appears in there. Um, and then at the bottom, we get a summary of your Etsy orders as well. So this pulls through from the order file. So these numbers, unfortunately, will not match what you've got up here. Um, the order file is a slightly weird kind of one on Etsy. So if you've refunded an order completely, it disappears off this list and it disappears out of the numbers when the order was first made, not when the refund was given. So for example, if you had a sale in February, you refunded it in April, in your payment account up here, the refund will appear in April, um, so it would be, would be that number. But in the order file, it effectively would just delete the order out of your February numbers. So February will, will not change up here, but changes down here um, and just disappears completely. If you partially refund an order, it doesn't show up down here. It will only ever show the full amount, uh, which is not great. And the uh, trying to think what else. Oh, the other issue is sometimes again the cutoff at month end. Um, so you might have an order included in March down here, but actually appears in April up here. Um, so yeah, so it's it's not easy to match the two. I've tried to reconcile them and failed. So I would just use this as kind of indicative numbers. It's just quite nice to get a breakdown between the kind of component parts of your orders. Um, but I wouldn't overly worry. I just included it because it's some people like to have that. And then just very at the bottom, I've just included a few order statist uh, statistics. So you get your average order value, which is just your um, sales revenue divided by the number of orders and the number, the quantity per order. So that's my dog moving around, believe me. Um, so again, it's just for information. It's quite nice to see what your average order value is and if that's growing or declining. Um, and how many items you sold on average per order. So that's what that shows you. And that is it on your Etsy numbers. So like I said, the numbers off here that are pulled through on the um, income and expenses are what appear on your 12 month report over here. These same numbers, there's actually um, two hidden columns over on this right hand side. You can see we go from R to V, I've just hidden those. Effectively, these same um, rows are repeated on those hidden columns and that's what kind of fuels this annual summary and that's because we have to go down to a day level. So if you wanted to run this from 6th of April 2021, actually if we do 6th of April 2022, which is the current tax year in the UK, you can see it will now split your orders between... Um, everything dated 6th of April onwards and everything dated up to the 5th of April 2022 will appear in this column. Um, so it's very handy for UK taxpayers um, who need the tax year starting 6th of April. It works independently to the dates that you have in the rest of the file. So my 12 month report hasn't changed, that's still January to December, but you can see an alternative view and also compare it to prior year, which is quite nice um, on this column. But we'll come back to that when we've finished um, adding in your other income and expenses, which I will do on the next video.